All right, so check this out. I somehow managed to blow two drivers in my sound system. These are 18-inch subwoofers, uh, and I lost two in one speaker on the right side of the sound system. So I originally thought that it was the voice coil that had blown out on these things, but it turns out that it's actually something completely different. Here, underneath the speaker, this is the cone, by the way. This is the speaker cone, right, of the speaker. And then down here, this is called the spider. And f these two connectors go to your amplifier. And these two connectors have two leads that go inside the spider into the coil. There's a coil that goes inside this magnet and that moves up and down, right? So what ended up happening with these two drivers is that the actual lead, there you go, you can see it right there, the actual lead broke. One of the leads going to the coil broke, probably from overexertion or heat, maybe it's possible. These kinds of things happen. Uh, there's, a, there's a myriad of reasons why that might happen, and that's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, I can't re-solder it the way it is there because I have to have a little bit of this lead that goes inside here to be able to clamp, clamp down on it and then solder it. So I either have to figure out a way to extend this lead or extend this post. Now, I don't have any material to extend this lead because it's a very particular type of, of, uh, of, of copper cable. Um, it's like a little braided cable and it's, I don't actually have any around. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to extend this post a little bit so I can reach this cable and clamp down on it. Uh, I'm at the club and I don't have a lot of spare parts, but I figured out that by hacking a quarter inch jack, which I'll show you in a second, I can probably extend this post and clamp onto the cable and the speaker will work just as fine. So this is the this is the quarter inch cable I'm talking about. I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to see this piece right here? I'm gonna cut that out of the quarter inch cable. I'm gonna rework it a little bit with uh, pliers. I'm gonna straighten it out and cut it up a little bit. And then I'm going to clamp this piece onto the wire, and then I'm going to solder this piece onto the copper. So I'm going to give that a shot, and then I'll show you what I come up with in a second. All right, so check it out. There's my little extension. I've got one end that's going to go connect inside the clamp of the normal post, and I'm going to solder and clamp that in there. And that'll make a little extension, and then at the other end, I'm going to put the, uh, the metal braid cable in there. I'm going to clamp it down and then I'm going to solder it in there. I'm going to solder everything really nicely, put an enormous amount of solder on there, more than I need to, uh, because it doesn't matter. And the more the merrier, it'll just hold it all together. Now the reason I want to clamp it is because due to the nature of this cable, it's difficult to solder something. There you go, you can see it really well there. It's really difficult to solder a normal cable onto that. Normally you pass it through the post, you put an enormous amount of goop and solder on there, and then you clamp it into the post, and that's how it holds. So I don't feel comfortable just trying to solder a cable alongside of that. I'm not sure how well that's going to hold. I basically want to make a little crimp extension. I just don't have any crimps, so I had to make one. So now I'm going to clean this post up, and then I'm going to clamp onto there and then I'm going to bend it and add the little extension onto it and then uh, we'll see what that looks like. Alright, so I'm letting it uh, set right now and I made sure to heat it up enough so that the solder, as you can see, it's shiny. See how shiny the solder is right now? And it's, it's cold now. I can actually take this guy off. We have shiny solder and that's, you know what? When you guys are working and soldering stuff, it doesn't matter how ridiculous the job looks, like this, look at this thing, it looks like some kind of crazy hack. If the solder is shiny, it's going to hold. If the solder is kind of flat looking, if it looks like a flat color, like, you know, like a flat silver, it's not shiny, that's a cold solder joint and it's not going to hold. So make sure that whenever you solder stuff together, no matter what you do, you get this sort of nice shiny thing going on. Uh, 
and then you know that it's going to hold together. Now this is good. This is actually, I mean, it looks a little janky, but it's actually going to hold together. I'm going to wire up the speaker tester and then uh, we'll give this guy a shot. So as you can see, we have the speaker tester connected. By the way, if you're a mobile DJ or uh, a sound person who's just starting out, if you're a professional, you probably already know about these things. Uh, or even if you're just working at home or you're setting up car audio at home doing DIY stuff, this is a really good device to have. This is a speaker tester and a tone generator. So as you can see, there's an RCA output. You can plug this into an amplifier uh, and it'll generate a tone. But you can also connect it directly to a speaker here. You see, I've got the red wire and the black wire connected to the speaker. And you can use it as a tone generator to test speakers. Like, for example, here, we'll turn the volume up on this guy. And there you go, see? I can test this speaker, and then basically you can go up frequency. volume level. These things are about $40 on uh, Amazon and I really recommend you buy one of these things if you're doing any type of live sound stuff. Even if you're a DJ who happens to like, you know, to have parts like, you know, like screwdrivers and pliers and soldering irons and stuff like that when you go to gigs because you're the guy who fixes stuff. I mean, in the 90s, I used to be that guy. I used to go to parties and I would have a, a, a toolbox, basically, you know, with my record crate. And if ever the sound system had a problem, because they were usually rented sound systems or sound systems that were just, just thrown together by guys who didn't really know what they were doing, the first thing they would do is, is turn around to me and say, yo, Lace, we got a problem. Can you come and check out the system? Many uh, old school DJs can tell you about times where I've actually repaired the sound system while the gig was going and the gig kept going because of that. So if you're going to be that guy, that's a really cool thing for you to do. And you should arm yourself at least with one of these things when you're doing repairs. Obviously, you can't use it <laughs> live but you know if you're taking apart a speaker like this it's kind of nice to have this little box and just you know right away see if your work worked right so here here I can test it and I can see that and I can do a little concert in my in my workshop here once you've got your speakers done like we repaired them you should always test them of course right so you should test them from the speaker uh, input of course like right there you put your little level meter you fire a tone in there and you check them but you should also always do a test from the amplifier see what I've done here is I've unhooked the cable from the amplifier and I've wired the tester to the cable that goes to the speaker reason being is that you just it's just a fail safe thing to do it's just one thing you always want to do always test from the cable end so here we are we you know we turn it on and nothing happens oh there we go <laughs> gotta turn it on uh, so I know that it's working from the cable the cable is good let's see over here both speakers are working fine we know we're good so always do that. Test from the cable. Uh, it may seem like a redundant thing to do, but when it comes to sound system stuff, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So you should test everything in the output signal path once you've done a repair. Then you just wire it back to your amplifier. And of course, after that, you do a test with the amplifier on with the sound going and if there's a problem there you know that it's not the cable it's not the speaker it's the amplifier so doing this kind of quick test gives you a chance to isolate any additional problems that may have happened if you blew a speaker I hope this helps